Cybersecurity is a real thing. In fact, if your organization is still operating under this idea that cybersecurity is just something for large organizations, and I'm afraid that now is the time to maybe reevaluate that stance. So let's talk a little bit about what that means for your organization, whether you're a small business or a large organization, implementing the proper cybersecurity controls and standards within your environment is probably more critical in 2020 than it has been ever in the, in the course of history. Now, why is it so important? Because the reality is the more things that you put online, the more attractive it is for those who will do wrong stuff, right? Cyber criminals and folks that are trying to leverage our personal information for their personal gain or sell that information. So the bad guys get more excited as we go online more and more. And with everybody in a remote working environment, that is the heyday for cybercrime because we're doing everything online. And as we collaborate more and increase our collaboration one with another, this is being done electronically. And it just continues to support the reality that we have to have a cyber framework in mind and be working on that documentation. Now, so what does that mean? Well, there's lots of cyber frameworks out there. Some of them have been popular for years like ISO and COBIT that are, or NERC that are very, very specific to an industry. And it can get confusing. They're called frameworks. And it can get very confusing out there on the multiple options that are available. But here's a word of advice. NIST, spelt N-I-S-T. NIST is kind of the mother load of all cyber controls. It has everything. In fact, many of those other cybersecurity frameworks are built or can link back to a NIST control. So where do I get started? Well, if you're a small business, look at the cybersecurity framework or CSF. Now, CSF has five primary objectives that basically say, be prepared and be prepared to recover. With those two things in mind, and there's five steps inside CSF with associated cyber controls, you can begin to build your environment to be more secure, to enhance that security. Now, is this gonna cost me a fortune? It might, depending upon your environment and what you have going on. But here's a few tips. One, about 50% of these controls are really policy-based, non-technical controls. How are you handling account management? What is your recovery plan? What happens in a response plan when you're attacked? All of those things are really paper exercises. You gotta have the policies in place, understand what you're gonna do when that occurs, how you're gonna do change management, configuration management, but those are things that you can go online and download from NIST and get started. So that part of it, honestly, in my many years of dealing with cybersecurity, those parts, the non-technical, seem to be harder for organizations because it's policy oriented. So you have to develop the policy, the discipline and the practices in order to get there. The second component, the kind of that second half, are the technical controls. Now those technical controls are making sure that your policies are staying in line and that they have integrity. So for example, your policy might be account management. Well, great. What are you gonna do to ensure account management is occurring within your environment? How are you setting up your Active Directory or your LDAP service? How are you protecting your users? Are you giving everybody administrative rights? Some of the simple things that are handled inside of the policy, the non-technical controls, now need to be executed from a technical perspective. So that's really, and then you just go through them one by one and get it all squared away. Now, is it a lot of work? I'm not gonna lie, 
there's a lot of work involved here, but there's a lot of templates that are available online from NIST that can help you get started. And there's lots of companies available to help you get started as well. So once you have your documentation, your controls established, what's next? Well, you really should have a third party come in and validate and do what we call a penetration or vulnerability scan. This will help you understand where the weak spots in your cyber plan are so that you can begin planning what's next. Now remember, in this step, it's critical. What you wanna do is make sure that you balance risk with cost, right, with effort. So you're going to find it's not going to be 100%. It's not going to be perfect. But if the risk is less than 10% to your environment, you may say, yes, I'm aware of that cyber hole. I'm working on plugging it, but I'm going to need budget to do X, Y, Z. Or I'm okay with accepting that 5 or 10% risk. The key here is that you know what the risk is and that you're documenting that risk in a way that you can take action on it. The problem with cybersecurity and where most companies get in trouble is that they, they think if they just kind of close their eyes that it's going to go away. It's not going away. Cyber is going to be here for a long time. So, so figure out what those problems are. Realize that having holes is okay and we just need to document it so that we know how to fix them in the future and have a plan so that when the incident occurs and the incident will occur, we can be prepared. Now, can I take advantage? Are there some technologies that will help me get out of the gate faster? There are. So if you're using technologies that are commercial based or software as a service, for example, Adobe, on their Adobe suite or Microsoft with M365. These are all cloud-based applications. And because they're cloud-based, those security controls, now you wanna make sure whatever company you're using has the security controls in place, but those can be inherited, what we call inherited, into your strategy. So that now you're not doing all the heavy lifting, they may have 80% already done for you. And I know in Microsoft, for example, they have EM5 and Compliance Center and other tools to help you be more compliant. So lean on those cloud providers to help make your job a lot easier. And then just focus on that percentage that is not done uh, that you need to kind of bolster up your environment. With that, you can really build a strong cyber plan. Document, implement those controls, right? You have to document the policy, those non-technical. Find out which controls you need. Figure out how to do those, how they fit into your policy. Implement those controls in your environment. And then at the end, do vulnerability and penetration tests against it and keep monitoring continually the environment. These simple steps will help. And remember, of course, it's okay not to be at 100%. Let's get as close as we can there and minimize our risk and have a good solid plan to get to 100%. With this simple strategy, you can secure your environment well and uh, keep everybody a little happier.